Final hour overdrive continues, brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. Brian Hayes, the O'Dog, Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan, Steve Phillips later in the hour. Jays Phillies coming up tonight in Philly. And you got the NHL draft lottery. The results, I believe, will be released later this hour, around 6.30. Probably comes in close to the end of our show in terms of who's actually going to end up with that first pick. And you got a couple of games in the Stanley Cup playoffs, and you know the Bruins go down to Florida and beat up on the Panthers 5-1 last night. And that's a quick response, man. It's a quick turnaround and a quick smack. You know, that's letting the Panthers know you're, you're they're, they're out for blood. Like with what happened yeah. last year, Florida, they had Florida on the ropes. Florida stormed back and won the series, obviously in seven. Boston's should have a chip on their shoulder. Florida's going to have something to say in game two. They're not that they, they yeah. know they drop two at home. They're in trouble. <clears throat> They'll have something to say. You're you're right. They laid it out last night on on a board. Uh, Boston was pissed this year. They played them four times. They beat Florida all four times. Mm. And there might be, and again, regular this season. This guy, that low ride guy, Noodles. Who, where, like, what round was that guy drafted? Second I don't. This, pick, this I kid is a hell of a player, man. He's got it. Like, it's he's like he's he's just showed up and has no fear in his game at all. He's making yeah. between the leg plays. He's got some bite. They held him out. He didn't play game one, right? I think no. he, they no, he didn't play earlier in the round against the he'll be, a, he'll be a mainstay back there for 10 years. Second round pick. Boy, let's let's nice do player. some damage here. Let's oh, just yeah. see what do it. Here. Do here it. Do it. Second do round it. pick. Oh, you know what's crazy is the Leafs had the, the pick right after him, and they took Roni Hervinen. Um, yeah. But he went 58th. Who, and, Lowry? Yeah, Lowry went 58th. In the so the the second round and uh, 2020 draft so 2020 that's 2020 draft it's a good draft Lafreniere Byfield yeah Stutzla Sanderson like yep. there's some great players yep. already in there right but man oh man yeah good pick I mean it's it's early in his career but he's a big kid and he he scored a beauty last night and Brazo did too man Justin Brazo six foot well that five, that one two thirty was bit. a Marley Ontario yeah. guy why would you want to keep him I mean that. That would have been silly to have him play on your fourth line. Maybe him and Mason Marchment were missing curfew together or something. Yeah. Possibly. I don't know. Yeah, we can't, possibly. You, we can't go back and do these what ifs. Like, <laughs> no, you can't because every team's got them. Every team's yeah, got it. Exactly. It just feels like with the Leafs, it just is more damaging because a lot of other teams have cups and they're like, whatever, everything's a wash now. Who cares? Right. You, know, you want a cup, who cares what you used to do? It doesn't matter anymore. You know, yeah. the least the least haven't done that. Tomorrow um, we're doing positivity. Positivity okay. Wednesday. Positive and Wednesday. we're gonna we're gonna look why we should be positive moving into the future and we all have to come up with our own spin. I okay? like that. I because we've like done the lot. we've done the funeral. We've done the funeral. Yep. Now we all have to maybe it's just you know what? You gotta play the role of Keith Pally tomorrow and talk about positivity and why it's gonna be positive and we each have a turn. Okay, I got okay. a couple already, but I'm fired up for tomorrow. Wait, save it for, save tomorrow. it for tomorrow. Save it for tomorrow. Positive Wednesday. We're gonna. We do might it. have to make it an hour and a half segment because I know when Hazy takes the mic. Cool. I'll be digging tonight, though, man. Re and remember, don't go negative because you might get sucked in. You might start talking to positive, and then you might yeah, go. Nah, it's, it's, it's all positive, positive tomorrow. Why? <laughs> No, JP, play that, come on, JP. JP. That's not JP. JP. That's inappropriate, JP. <laughs> yeah, don't yeah. do that, man. We don't want that. It's so positive. tomorrow, tomorrow, you've got a spiel. You've got to come up with something, some bullet points on why it's important to be positive because of this. Okay, I like it. All right. Uh, yeah. There you go. We'll, we'll be. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll do it tomorrow. It's basically a role play. You're playing the role of Keith Pelly. Maybe the three of us: Keith Pelly, Brendan Shanahan. No, Brad we're not going to be now. those guys. We're our own guys. We we're just have to guys. provide the fans something of looking forward into the future, why you shouldn't just be lighting your stupid jerseys on fire. We have to come up with some positivity because we've done the funeral for two days now. Now we've got to recharge. I'll talk to the life coach tomorrow and mm -hmm. think about why be positive moving forward. I thought he yeah. was sitting in on on the panel this week at some point. The life we coach. could do Friday. Friday he'll he'll offer his fitness advice if people want help. I got people DMing me saying, "Oh dog, I'm a moose like you were," and I'm like, "I can't help you. You got to talk to him." I, I can. I, I don't. He he you does that, not me. You can give perspective of what you've gone through the last 
three. How, how many months has it been now? Like when, November first, I started. So you're six that's a good run. In. That's a long time. Yeah, yeah, it is. But my perspective's different. I don't know what people are up to. My old yeah. man made a machine, and I stopped being a machine. Now I'm a machine again. I don't know yeah. what people are like. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, <laughs> Steve Phillips later in the hour. We're tracking the uh, draft lottery as well. Positive tomorrow. I don't know if there's going to be positivity right now, though, because we got confirmed confirm or deny. You guys ready? Yeah. Yes. I can neither confirm or deny that, uh, that this is, in fact, a segment. Austin trades Andrew Raycroft to Toronto in exchange for the rights to Tuka Rask. It's been my honor and a privilege to serve as the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs Hockey Club. It's time for confirm or deny. Do you regret uh, giving all those gentlemen the no trades or no movement clauses? I, I, I can neither confirm or deny that. I can't confirm or deny. <laughs> All right, positive Wednesday. Maybe Fergie comes back into the fold. Yeah, Maybe he's the go. fourth man on the podium on Friday. Confirm or deny brought to you by Summit Ford and South Lake Ford Lincoln, where there are no denies, only confirms when it comes to trades. Any make, any model, we will take it. Visit summitford.com or southlakeford.com. All right, confirm or deny. We know the way this works. Statements are made. We confirm them or we deny them. Confirm or deny, if John Tavares is a Maple Leaf next season, he should remain the captain. Deny, deny. They've got to. They've they've got to do something different and totally change the vibe, the outlook, the message. It's just, and I don't know who that should be. The obvious choice is make it Austin Matthews' team, but what you got to do is you got to call the San Jose Sharks and the players involved there, saying when you went from Rob Blake to Marlowe to Thornton and that merry-go-round out there what was the benefit so you have to do your due diligence and find out what that did and what the positivity was and if it's worth it that's what you got to do because mm. it's not a little thing especially in this market doing something like that so you've got to weigh the pros and cons but I, I i'm looking into it just for changing everything everything's got to be changed but you got to find out what the risks and what the the rewards are and that's what you got away. Yeah, I, I'm denying it too because I think you're looking forward to the future. Like even technically, if John Tavares finishes out his contract, it's one more season. So you could easily just go, well, let him finish it out and we'll choose a new captain once we moved on. But if you are going to start, and I'm kind of looking forward to some of the changes that will happen here. And if John is still part of it, 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 it almost might be a celebration, like I'm passing this on. You know, here I'm in my last year with Toronto. Like, I, I think Austin, I, I think it would just be Matthews. Like, it's not going to be I, – I, I voted Morgan Riley years ago when John got it. I was a Riley guy. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it's Austin. You see a lot of traditional on the teams that we see throughout the league. It's your, your number one guy. And if Austin is the leader that everyone believes he is in that room, then – you give him the C and you move on. And if John signs, you know, what people were talking to O-Dog about, a, a, a lower extension and all that, it doesn't matter. It's still Matthew's team. Yeah, that, that's why I just – I don't know how that's going to work or look. Um, I'm going to confirm that he should remain the captain, even though I, I'm leading the charge. I'm right there with you that something has to feel different. It's stale. It looks different. It feels different. But if he's going to return – I just, I don't think Tavares, nothing's changed with him. You know, and I, I know you'll reference, well, nothing changed with Thornton, and that may be true, and, you know, when Pavelski took over and Marlowe, but... What do you mean by the comment, nothing's changed with him as far as what? Well, he's the same guy. Like, he, he, like what happened with Blake Wheeler, something was in the water there, clearly, because right. they bought him out the next year. They're like, get out of here. We don't want you right. here. Like, yeah. that was clearly them saying, you're not the captain because of your actions or whatever we see in you what is like yes Tavares is not the same player not going to score at the same rate the guy still does the same thing every single day no, like, I know. it's my point but it's, it's just like, about different sometimes different needs to happen I, I agree with you and I think ideally what it is is you move off it completely but if we're working under the pretense he is back next year yeah, then right. you know the idea that you're taking it off him and giving it to someone else 
Basically, what you're saying is he never should have had it. No, um, that's not true, man. That's well, not true. I mean, ult- ultimately, if you're going to give it to Matt, why didn't you just give it to Matthews five years ago or four years ago? Or that's whatever? the biggest question. But the one well, thing I, you can't do is say, we're taking it off of him and we're just going to have three A's. If they pull that nonsense, that is that's well, they the might. Mistake. I mean, they you have might to have a plan. I, I think you have it's got to be Austin Matthews. You're the captain. Like, but you also have to talk to Austin and say, like, you better be all- prepared. Yeah, you better be prepared That's to right. talk. That's right. There is all day. different dynamics that you have to look in for that. Like, yeah. it's just, yeah, uh, it's not something you just pulled the trigger on. You know when it could have been done, realistically? And, and this, is, again, no slight on John. It's when when Austin signed his extension. John, go, I got two years left on my contract. You just signed a five-year Like, let's have a changing of the guard, a passing of the torch. That's what Kevin Deneen did. Keith Primo was in Carolina. Kevin said, I'm not long here, guys. It's Keith Primo's time to be the captain. It was a very simple transaction. Well, there was no, like, no way in hell am I giving this up like it's some kind of golden conch or something. It's like, just move on and play hockey. I don't know. That would be ideal, Then, but what what you need is Tavares, then, to be proactive in that. Because, right. again, this is the thing. We're just assuming John's going to shake everyone's hand when his deal's up and move to Anaheim. I, I don't know if that's – that doesn't seem to be his plan, you know. Wow. So, if you know, again, if you're going to remove the C off his jersey, then what you're saying is this is the end of the road. Too. It has to coincide with even if you'll play for eight hundred grand, we're moving. Like, I just right. – I don't know – for me, it's more black or white in terms of his future with the team as opposed to the captaincy being the pri- – like the fresh start is is probably him just not a part of the program, right? right. And and changing the whole vibe around the leadership in the room. I just don't know if the – like well, taking the C off the guy's jersey in his last year is going gonna, gonna to lead to anything but awkwardness and – well, let let me strange kind of let, vibes around the team. Let's go back to the starting of the show when both of you were saying you're trying to win a, you're trying to win a cup, and you know Vegas is the model, right? Like ruthlessness, like you know what? That's kind of ruthless. You I, know what I, I mean? I agree like with it, you, but it, it, you know what, what I'm it, saying on that then is go to them today and say we are going to explore moving you. We would appreciate if you waive your no move. That's right. what Vegas wouldn't rip the C off. Vegas would say, you're not playing here anymore. That's like, what they did right. to Mark andre Fleury. Absolutely. They've done yeah. it to a bunch of guys. Max Pacioretty, you got hurt, didn't work. Thanks for coming out. See ya. You yes. know, like that's, that's, that's what I get back to the owing thing. They're like, oh, you can't do, you do whatever you want. But I guess like it's, that's what I'm saying. If it's, if you're, if you're, that's why the C to me is secondary. You know, it's right. it, it, once you've determined, okay, you're coming back, unless it is, hey, you got to go. And he goes, I'm not waving. But then it becomes like, Awkward. what are you going to do? Like, pet, you know, you're going to rip it off and then what? M- not make him an A and sit him or something? Like, they're not going to do that. I don't think they're going to operate that way. Yeah. Um, all right. More on this. Positive Wednesday is forthcoming. We look yeah, forward to that. <laughs> Confirm or deny. The Leafs should not ask Tavares or Mar- Marner to waive their no movement clause. Only move off them if they proactively ask for a move. How do we feel say about the quest, the, Say the wording of it again. The Leafs should not ask Tavares and Marner to waive no, their wrong, no movement. No, wrong, wrong. So you, you're denying you, that. You gotta, you, you gotta try to make things different. If that's what it takes, as Ray Ferraro always says, you gotta put your big point, big boy pants on and do it. Like, that's it. I, I don't know how else to explain that. Mm-hmm. And guys, this isn't a like for the people listening and viewing. It's not a lot of fun to talk about. But if we're going to be the Vegas Golden Knights now and be cutthroat about winning, these are the th- these are some of the things that come into play. Right. It, it, it's not about oh he's that guy so we can't do this. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. And that's what Kelly McCrimmon does out there in Las Vegas. So they just want a Stanley Cup. So maybe give it a shot. There's no more owing anything. No. If, these I'm guys have been paid out. They they've been owed and paid everything that they got, and the results coming back are zero. Mm-hmm. So it's time to do something different. Yeah, I, I mean, if the vision is that you're going to try and move away, then yes, you. I'm, am I denying or am you're I denying agreeing? that? Yes, I'm denying. I should that, not ask. Yeah, I, I'm denying that and saying if the plan is to move away or try and free up cap space, then you have to do it because the other two are under contract. So you have to look at one or both. 
and see what they would like to do. And I get, I keep coming back to you. You got to work together. This will mm-hmm. be a, you know, if, if that's the plan that you're going to try and make one or both, uh, if you're going to move on from them, that that's what you're going to do. Yeah, I'm denying it too. And I, I, we don't know if that is their plan. Like, yeah, who knows what their know. plan is? And I don't know how much will be revealed on Friday, but actions will speak louder than words throughout the summer. But if that is the, you know, the priority. Core four is going to break up one of them, both of them, whatever. Because again, we can see, we know Matthews and Nylander. The reason they're not even a part of the chat is because they're staying. Like we right. know they're staying, they're committed to those two guys. Um, yeah, you that's you have to do it. You have you have to explore it. They may say no, and then when they say no, then you you have to shift. Like because they have the right to say no. It's their contract. They signed it. You signed it. They have the right to do that. Um, all right, let's move off the Leafs here. All right, we'll say. Yeah. <laughs> I had a couple more that. Positive Wednesday. Oh, we're tomorrow. not doing any more. Get something else, All right, man. here we go. Confirm <laughs> or deny. This one, you know where I stand on this. We just talked about it. Macklin Celebrini should have remained on Team Canada for the Worlds. Yes. And how, like, I don't know who decided to do that, whatever they did there, picking Pierre-Luc Dubois. Like, what kind of message is that? The way he played all year long and then in the playoffs, and you say, do you want to come and join Team Canada? For what? Isn't the crest on the Team Canada jersey, like, all about heart and determination on the ice? Yeah. And and what did he do to show that? That's just something I wouldn't even have wanted. I'm shocked they did that. I agree. Yeah, I'm confirming well, it. Celebrating. You should have your top prospect there every year. It's a great tournament. It'd be awesome to see the stud play with the big boys. And, yeah, Pierre-Luc Dubois, why is he on the team? It's crazy. Crazy, crazy stuff. I, I, had, I had somebody send me a note. That Dubois has been through Hockey Canada, the whole program. Noodles, I don't care if his awesome. dad's the president of Hockey Canada. <laughs> I, I really don't. I mean, he didn't have a great year, but they're very loyal to the guys who have been through the program. And then he's the NHL player. Celebrini... The guy played in college. You have no idea if he can play pro right now. I'll They're take my chances the with yeah, the but... guy in college as a guy that just absolutely didn't break a sweat for six I, I months. I get it. I, I get it. But I'm just I, I'm I'm denying it. I I think you try and win. I, you guys have a problem with PLD. I don't yes, have a problem I with serious. Problem I don't have a that. problem with Nick Paul and and Brandon Hagel. Those guys are better than Celebrini right now. Probably. And that's yes, you're right. That's my but... point. So uh, you guys are looking at PLD. I'm looking at. Brandon Hagel, who scored 75 points in the National Hockey League, wasn't wearing a visor or a, a cage in college last year getting 36 goals. That's my point. But you're trying to win the tournament. It's not about, hey. So why did Bedard go there last year? And why Why has, you know, other. Be, okay. I think Bedard, Bedard was generational. Up. Yeah, he was Bedard ratcheted up. Bedard is generational. We're okay. not. Is, is it's celebrating gener- generational. No, like that's but, the, a, but you're, 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 what your your argument is? He's not a pro, so he shouldn't go. No, no. Neither was I, my argument. My argument. What a phrase! You, you're, it is a good phrase. My argument <laughs> is that Brandon Hagel scored seventy five points in the National Hockey League last yes. year. Bedard was is a generational player. We don't know what Celebrini is at the pro level. Noodles, yet. I think Hazy's only he's point is overall. he just think if the top the top prospect so was is Canadian. Neil Yakupov. So was Alexi Lafreniere. Like they're all like. So was uh, the guy who went ahead of Pronger. That I guy. think Lef- Lafreniere. Right. I think it? he played at the Worlds. Did he not? I'm pretty sure they, they brought him. I'll I'm have just, to look in my notes. I'm pretty yeah, sure he did. Notes. I'm just saying that I. You guys are pissed about the PLD. I'm not so pissed. Like I think Nick Paul. And Hagel, those are better players right now. They're Fine, NHL but players. I, I, I'm pissed both ways because, again, this, this tournament, I think, to spice it up, I like the idea of Celebrini being there. Owen Power like, went like there the and was a stud. Owen Power. Exactly. Yeah. Is Power, you know, is that guy Chris Pronger? No, but – and he went to college. Why right, did Power yeah. go? Yeah, listen. Neil Yakupov I, went first overall. Like, why did Power go? Because it was, yeah. it's an interesting play. It makes yeah. I, I like the move, and you, you're kind of you're filtering through new talent. There'll be a big right. part of Canada in the future. I agree. Like, it, it's not. Uh, Joe from the bridge said Lafreniere did not go to the world. He did not. Thank, Thank you, Joe from the bridge. Thank my you, apologies. Joe from the bridge. He's on my side now. My apologies. Uh, no, there is no side. I just. It's I, not. I'm, it doesn't I'm, matter one way. Let's or get to the next one. Yeah, let's yeah. move on to the next one. All right, one. all right. Positive <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> Confirmed tonight. Jesus. Alec Manoa will remain in the rotation until the trade deadline. Absolutely Ooh. not. Absolutely not. The night is. Dude, you saw that hanging slider, okay? Two yeah. of them, not one. Two. Multiple, actually. It was, yeah. The the one that 
left the park was, as we said yesterday, the definition of a 3-2 hanging slider. What did you say if somebody came from Mars? Yes. Yeah, if a said. Martian landed and said, I've heard the term hanging slider, please show me an example. I would say, yeah, sure, I can do that. Bottom of the fourth, Alec yeah. Manoa, 3-2 count, two on. Go take a peek. He's not saw. far from wearing a jersey with a real funky logo, like a – like a, an Indiana, like a, yeah, Indianapolis, like Indianapolis buzzer jersey. eater or something like a yeah. like a real weird logo on his jersey, and it's sad and it's a it's a fall from grace that's that's crazy right. because this guy was starting at Yankee Stadium yelling at the dugout and Garrett Cole that he wanted to fight him, and s- pitching in the All Star game and yelling punchies, and now he's hanging. <laughs> hanging sliders that are getting hit to Mars. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just one of those things in sports where you see a guy, whether it be Chuck Knobloch not being able to throw to first base or David Duvall not mm-hmm. being able to hit a golf ball on the planet where it just mentally falls off and you're gone. So whether this guy can ever get it back and what the timeline on that looks like, I don't know, man, because it's game over right now. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. tough to watch. I, yeah, it doesn't. There's nothing from his body of work in the last what calendar year that should speak for him to be on the roster in the rotation right now. Yeah, yeah, he shouldn't be here right now. For forget the end of July. That's what I mean. For, forget through the trade deadline. Like, mm. I think he's going to get another start, though. Don't he you will. Think? Oh yeah, that's happening. It's this week. We'll see him pitch again. He's. They're going to give him multiple chances now but hey if he does have a quality start what that looks like or the numbers of that i i i don't know but do you have any confidence that he would back it up no i don't and exactly and the issue like he's saying the same things he said last year it's that he's trying to be too fine and he's trying to avoid barrels and it's he's not just pitch like he hasn't figured that out go and, and get can, guys out that's all you need to say i can't himself. get guys out no yeah, he doesn't he trust doesn't. himself he doesn't trust his stuff he doesn't trust that he can do it he's in a really bad place and that's making and, up excuses and coping mechanisms coming up with all that mumbo jumbo yeah that is hiding the real idea of i can't get guys out so that's yeah. why they say all that nonsense in that's any sport i'm gonna deny it i'm gonna deny yeah. it um I just thought of one on the fly, like Mitch Marner going to the Worlds. Do you think that would, would that boost his approval rating if he played Couldn't for Canada? Couldn't hurt. Couldn't hurt. Why not? I, I don't know if that guy, that question got asked the other day. Would you be willing? Like, I don't know why would that be on the radar of anybody. I never thought of it until we started talking about this. But he is a vet. He wants to be on Canada which a year from now in the Four Nations Cup. Then he the should Olympics. go. Then he should go. Yeah, yeah he probably should. I thought about it. Well, now Celebrini's there. <laughs> Celebrini. No Marner. Celebrini. Or Celebrini. Marner. No, I'd rather Celebrini there. I would. Celebrini's no, I'm my joking. guy. I'm joking. But I'd I, take McDavid you, off the team for but Celebrini. Do you, do you think, like, Is Tampa Sid lost going? in what? No, Sid's not going. What did Tampa lose in? Five games or six? Five. Uh, five. five. So Mitch played. Like, it felt like that leaf, like, it felt like that series went for three weeks. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. Like, everyone else seemed to be done, and the Leafs were, like, five. They played one game in five days, yeah. I think it was. Like, something ridiculous. I think he probably would just say, no, like, I'm done. It's too much. Like, he probably, right now, would look at his gear and say, I hate hockey right now mentally. I just need I need a break. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what I would say with Mitch. So. Yeah, and I would have thought the same thing with Pierre-Luc Dubois. And I'll actually give him credit as much as I'm, like, I don't know why he's on the team. The guy said, I'll, I'll go. Like, I, I, I don't want to end on a bad note. I'll go play. And watch him be the best player in the tournament. And we're Which coming on. He's got him. the talent to do it. Oh, That's what's God. so frustrating it's, with Pierre Well, Luke I think Dubois. That's why it's, people get so disappointed. Is yeah, he's a really good player. looking at this guy going, my God, the guy's 6'3", 220, can skate, shoot, do it all, fight. And you're just going, they had him on the third and fourth line in L.A. Like, that's they L.A. thought they brought in – PLD for that Edmonton series. The right. Depth close down the up the middle. Yeah. Right. And Edmonton just said, no, thank you. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. You know? No, exactly. So. Um, all right. There you go. Confirm and deny. Brought to you by Summit Ford and South Lake Ford Lincoln, where there are no denies, only confirms when it comes to trades. Any make, any model. 
We will take it. Visit summitford.com or southlakeford.com. Steve Phillips on Manoa a couple of days ago. What do you expect out of this two-game series down in Philly? Aaron Sanchez starting for the Bisons this week. Is there any possible chance he plays for the Jays this year? Uh, more on that with Steve Phillips. Our best bets brought to you by FanDuel still to come as well. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 2. All right, best bets brought to you by FanDuel later in the hour. A couple of games in the Stanley Cup playoffs. A couple of games in the NBA playoffs. Boston, Cleveland getting started tonight. Feels like the Celtics are just going to roll in that series. But uh, OKC, Dallas, that should be a great series tonight. And you got the Jays in action. Jays are down to Philly. And, and you know, you might argue if Philly's the best team in baseball, real close to it. Real close to it. And they packed that park, and it's going to be rambunctious down there. And the Phillies. And they got like yeah. all business dudes down yeah. there, like just hardcore bald dudes. Yes. Yeah. They've won six in a row. They're 25 and 11. And the Jays obviously are not, <laughs> to put it lightly, the Jays are not those statistics. Uh, right. And to chat about it, here's our TSN MLB analyst, Steve Phillips. What are you expecting here, Steve? Two games down in Philly for the Jays. Well, I tell you, they got their work cut out. You're you're facing the hottest team in baseball. They're 17 and three in their last 20 games. They were eight and eight at one point. Oof. Now they're 17 and three since then at 25 and 11. So they're playing great baseball. Bryce Harper's homer to three straight games. Alec Bohm had an 18 game hitting streak that just came to an end, but he's ready to start one again. Their pitching's been great, but. They're, they're missing Wheeler. Uh, they're going to get Christopher Sanchez in the game tonight, a left-hander that, that isn't overpowering, that, uh, you know, the right-handed bat be able to have some quality of bats against them. But they've got their work cut out for them, being able to hold down what is a really powerful offense from the Philadelphia Phillies. Steve, I can understand. I haven't talked to you in a while. At the beginning of the season, you were kind of underwhelmed, and you were like, this is a lot of average, and that's kind of exactly what's playing out, huh? It really is. And, and, you know, I mean, look, they, they are, they're a lesser offensive team than they were a year ago. And, uh, I mean, it, look, if Bichette was swinging the bat like Bichette could uh, and has, and if Vlad could do even you – know, he didn't have to be the guy he was, you know, three years ago, but he's, even if he's just playing better and Springer's a little better. But, you know, they, what they were banking on was all this internal improvement, and they've not gotten it. And, you know, the idea of internal improvement is, is fine, but it's not taking into account the potential and the reality that some players from the year before are going to regress. Now, they're not going to play as well as they were. The pitching is not going to be as good as it was a year ago. And so, you know, you can't just make assumptions that, and then you're going to fix the guys who underperform about how it works in the game. That, that yeah, it's they've got their work cut out. Throw, throw him on hold. Let's see if we can get him back. Clear the line. Yeah, he's cutting out. Yeah, a little bit of a cutout. And he's, you know, that, that's the interesting thing, too, about Manoa, which is not what we're talking about there. He's talking about the offense. And, and Bichette and Vladdy and Springer have been particularly bad. And, and Bo. Real bad, dude. Yeah, like, like truly some of the worst hitting you can see, especially for one, two, three. And they've moved Bichette further down the, down the order. I don't know where he's hitting tonight. But, you know, Bo's in his prime he's in his 20s you know unless he's fighting some injury that we're not aware of then this is just wild what we've seen through you know 35 games um we got steve phillips back and and steve you're talking about you know internal improvement they were hoping for it and and we lost you there and i got on about bichette and like springer's older he's had some injuries uh, you know this is still inexcusable the way he's playing they need more out of him but what, what is your read on Bo? Because it is like staggering his approach at the plate right now. Yeah, well, he's an over-trier, and, and he's, you know, he's also a guy who does walk a lot, right? And a lot of times the way to get out of a slump isn't to swing, it's to take. But he's not programmed that way, right? He's, he's a guy that will get 200 hits. He doesn't want to go up there to walk. So he's swinging at the 3-1 pitch that's close. He's swinging at the 3-2 pitch that's close uh, and, and trying to put it in play when, you know, sometimes the best way to hit is to show that you take and that you work the count, that you take a walk. And I think, he, you know, and again, that's not, that's not the way he's wired. But right now, you don't have to throw it over the plate to him because he's so anxious to try to get a hit because he looks at the scoreboard, he sees his batting average, and he thinks to himself, I have to get a hit, I have to get a hit. 
that's a horrible place to be in. And, you know, what I was saying about the team is that, you know, you had players last year who underperformed and, and the, the idea that, well, we're just going to fix the guys who were broken last year and everybody else is going to be as good as they were is a pretty naive view of how baseball works because, you know, the reality is that, that players regress. Guys who had great years the year before don't always play the same. And the idea that everybody was going to be the same that was great last year, the starting pitching and the guys who hit and then everybody else was going to be better, that's just not the reality of how baseball works. And it's an assumption. Okay, let's throw Stevie on uh, hold there. I don't know if this one's wow. going to work. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to work. But, it's um, yeah, it's too bad because there's a lot to get into here, right? Like they're, we got to give him one more kick at the game. You want to give one more shot? Well, yeah, yeah. We'll, give, we'll give him one more crack at it because we haven't even got to Manoa and Sanchez. I want to get his take on those two. <laughs> I got to ask about Manoa. Like just yeah. what he – you're right, Sanchez is another one. But, like, Manoa is just – what does he seem – what does he believe the – end game is here for him it's a great question and we will get to it and luckily they got Barrios on the mound tonight so they're hoping they and they're coming off an off day but their bullpen's been a mess all right Steve one more crack at it buddy um your phone's been going down but let's get to Manoa here like the, the idea that they brought him up the way he pitched the way they're trying to talk him up he scheduled the pitch again on Sunday against the Twins where, where, what do you make of this decision by the Jays to even bring him up, and, and how long can this last if he keeps pitching the way he's pitching? Okay, we're done. That's it. That's, That's it. it. That's, That's it. it. We're done. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I know that. We're, we've had enough. We tried. It's we tried our best. There's nothing Man, we can do. I had, one, can do. I had one kind of big-picture question where I think in management, like, before you lie your head on your pillow every night, you kind of like you have a bit of truth serum and you know what you got. Like yeah. Ross Atkins has got to know that this team is nowhere close to being much. So what's the sense of trying to talk yourself into that? Do you know what I mean? Like why? Yeah. yeah. And it's a difficult thing to just blow things up all the time because you have to navigate the path after you're wanting to make moves. But to think you're getting anything done with this group, like that's that's a big Stop. time mistake. So yeah. what do you do with it? Is the only question left. That's what's scary. It's like they probably peaked two years ago, and it didn't feel like it. It felt like they were still ascending, right? And they right. they won, I think, 91 games. And remember, they played Seattle in the wild card game. And yeah, but don't up. forget, we're they're they're descending because you're watching Bo and Vladdy up at the plate, and you don't recognize them right now. Right. So can they return to that? And well, I, I mean, they'll. I don't I don't think they can. I mean that's that's the whole point. Is even if when those guys return but Shet's not gonna hit like one ninety all year. Right. He's got one home run. He's got an OPS of five thirty. That's like that's, that's not good. I, that's absurd. <laughs> that the, is, those are dude. absurd statistics for a guy of his caliber. All right. He's he's Bo Bichette we're talking about here. And and you look at his stats and, and they're, they're they're crazy, crazy bad right now. Um, and Vladdy's, you know, not much better. Springer's not much better. Springer's got a 582 OPS. You know, he's hitting 205. Um, it's just not good enough. But those guys will return to probably where they were in the past. Yet even when they do, what is that? 85 wins? Still not the playoffs. Is it 89 right. like a year ago and you get in and you get dusted in the wild card? Like that that's the thing is is what are you trying to achieve here? Are you wow. just trying to get back to a point where you think you can maybe be a team that's, you know, the the ninth best team in the league, you know, and, and is that good enough? Maybe it is. Maybe, maybe that's but, all they expected this year. Maybe that's all they were hoping but, for. But isn't what we've been talking about, I'll bring it back to the Leafs, but with the Jays here too, it wasn't a, that long ago, like people were talking the Jays could be in the World Series, could be top tier. Like, you're yes. trending Noodles, in the that year direction. before last, they were, I, I they know, were favored, years they were ago, favored they to win it. But, but what I'm saying is, who's talking like that? And like, there's no, like, Nobody within is. the organ, but within the organization, they're trying to win a World Series. You're not trying to go, hey, we're going to, you know, we're going to try and really make the playoffs here. Like, that. that's where they've regressed to a point where I thought they were headed in one direction, and it's just, it's completely turned to where, yeah, 89 wins. Like, it was 91, then it was 90. Now it's 89. Like, now you're, hey, let's get to 85. 
Like, where are they, what are they trying to do here? Like, well, what, that's and that's what I'm saying. And th- those are two two separate conversations. What the outside world is projecting and what right. they are projecting. Two years ago, the outside world was saying that they can win the World Series. I'm sure, they felt good about their chances. Right. Um, but you know, you you have to separate the two because I don't know what Shapiro and Atkins really thought. Like it started with oh, talking about true serum. Yeah. And, you know, when you're laying in bed at night, you, you, that's your job as the GM is to to analyze without emotion, yeah. you know, is to look right. at your team honestly. And, and you can trick yourself, Hayes. You can trick yourself to say maybe, maybe, but before you go to bed, you have the truth serum and you're like, they're just not that good. Right. And, yeah. and there's going to be bias. There's going to be subjectivity. You're a human. You're a person. Right. Like it's not yeah. it's impossible. You're not a computer. You're not 100% objective. You're going to look at guys and say, I believe in them because you, you traded for them or you signed them or whatever. You know, there right. are biases involved. But on, the, on a grander scheme, when you're talking about wins and losses, not individuals, but wins and losses and how good you are compared to the other teams, they, they have to know that they're just not even close to good enough. And right. even when things start to turn and move in a better direction – and I believe they will. But Chet's not going to hit 195. You know what I mean? Like, he's he's not going to finish with four home runs. He's he's going to start hitting. He's going to get hot. Vladdy will hit. He'll get hot. Their arms, I think their bullpen is better than the way they're pitching. They're, they basically got the 30th bullpen in baseball. Like, when you look at their numbers, the amount of home runs they give up, their 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 ERA, everything across the board, it's a mess. Like, they're, they're just getting yeah. crushed in the bullpen. And that was supposed to be a strength. Now, the bullpen... It, it changes every year. It is very volatile. You never really know what you're going to get. You can plan. You can think you got power arms. You can think guys are going to be healthy, and, and it can blow up in your face, and that's happened this year. But I don't believe by the end of the year they will statistically be where they are today. So even if they start to move up and they're a right. middle-of-the-pack bullpen and a middle-of-the-pack offense, what is that? You're middle-of-the-pack. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. now you're bottom third in basically everything. And as a result, you're 16 and 19 and you're bottom third. You know, there's a couple of awful teams in baseball. Like, you know, Colorado's terrible. The White Sox are terrible. But I think the fans would almost right. have more of an appreciation. We've said it for years. The worst spot to be in is a team that thinks we saw it with the Leafs with that regime before this one, thinking you're good enough and you're not even close mm. because you either just missed the playoffs, get crushed in the – well, these guys get crushed in the first round too and they think they're gonna they're cup contenders. But to be that team that's middling around and just – like middling around getting dummied or not making the playoffs and you also miss out on top picks, worst place to be in sports. So why yeah. be there? Yeah. No, it's it's uh, that's exactly it. I mean, there there's it's early to the point where you look at Houston, they're getting crushed. Now they have a ton of injuries. Their their arms are just they don't have a rotation right now. But right. they're twelve and twenty two. I mean, that's pretty wild considering their history. Um, but on the flip side of that, the Jays look up and Oakland's got one more win than them, and that's Oakland. That's Sacramento. That's soon right. to be Vegas, and that's kind of where you find yourself. 35 games into the season. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I don't I don't know, you know, if you're being a realist, how much you can expect it to change to the point where they start chasing 90-plus wins and become like a World Series competitive team. I think yeah. they're better than the way they've been playing. I, I still think above 500 is attainable. But what does that mean, to your point? What, what does yeah. it matter if you finish with 83 wins or 84 wins yeah. when you've been a playoff team the last couple of years? And three or four years ago, you were moving up, right? You signed Springer, and Vladdy was coming, and Bo was coming, and everything was moving in the right direction. And now it, it feels like you're on the you're on the other side of that. And yeah. how far are you going to go before it stops? Uh, we'll get to our best bets. Brought to you by FanDuel. The NHL draft lottery, I believe, is underway, and uh, we're going to try to keep you updated on that. When's gonna- the first pick? Like when is that like official? I don't. I mean, it's going into the games tonight, right? Like it's on ESPN in the states, and you know what time is puck drop for the first hockey game tonight? Rangers, Carolina's seven o'clock, so it'll be done by seven. Right? Yeah, it's, it's during the pregame. Like once they get going for go time at the Garden, so we'll uh, we'll keep you updated on that. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN two. All right, today's best bets are powered by FanDuel. Make your picks and assemble a same-game parlay in seconds on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Under six and a half goals, Avalanche Stars tonight. 
I know what we saw at Colorado in the last round. I get it. But Dallas, they don't they don't roll like that. They're not gonna play like Winnipeg did. Yeah. They're 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 gonna slow things down and they're gonna battle. I think this will be a grind. I think it's gonna be a great series. Great series. And I think it'll be a tight checking three two, four two game tonight. And I like the Hurricanes to, to tie it up. I think that that series going deep. I like Carolina tonight, money line. Today's best bets powered by FanDuel. FanDuel's goal in the first 10 minutes is the most electric bet in hockey and can be included in a same-game parlay on any NHL game. Please play responsibly. Must be 19-plus. Physically located in Ontario. All right, so we're into the bottom four, I believe. Montreal's at five, last I saw. They... So Montreal did not get in. No. All right, so Blue Jackets are four. So it's some combination of Anaheim, Chicago, San Jose for the top pick, which I believe were the three worst teams. Right. Um, so technically no one jumped and moved up. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see where, uh, where Celebrini ends up going, assuming he goes first. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if he will, but San well, Jose was last. Is there talk of some big defenseman that could overtake him? I think it's mostly – forwards at the top. There's a kid out of London, uh, Dickinson, who's a really good defenseman. I, I don't think he's supposed to go first, but I think he's going to be possibly a top five, top seven pick. Um, you know uh, who's uh, who's made some uh, some headway is uh, Iggy's boy, yes. Tish. Like, he, he scored the winner the other day, yeah, didn't he, I, for the U18s? I, 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 I would, if Salabrini's number one noodles, I would look at that kid and say, screw it, I'm drafting you. I'm taking you number two, because guess what? The, guess what the reference point is, Matthew Kachuk. That's yeah. the reference point. Yeah, we're Brady or both. Of, Bra- both know know of them. Like, yeah, yeah Bra- like- both of them. It's like there's Keith Kachuk's kid. Now let's take him seventh, and look at what happened before that. I would not take that chance again. Number I, two, take him. I, I mean, you know, take it for what it's worth. But talking to some people over there, they think you know. Iggy's boy. It's his name is Tej. Tej is like could be as high as three to five. That's what mm-hmm. and and you know when this all started, he was kind of top twenty type of thing, creeping into hey maybe top fifteen. And you're right because if well, it's well, a coin I, flip, the, with the pedigree, are, yeah, like look at yeah. number two and at number two, it's like you could have Iggy's boy there, and it's like you saw what the two Kachuk boys are doing. So why would you want to risk a bust and drafting yeah. some stiff? <laughs> when you can have Jerome McGinley's son. I don't know. Oh, I, to me, it's I a agree. slam dunk. Yeah, I mean, someone like, you know, there's, you, you know, that Calgary market, they're, they're picking what, nine? But they're at nine. Like, they're, they're, that's the, the worry is like, he won't get to nine. Like, they're, they're sniffing. Like, they've talked about it in Montreal market. Trade up. Trade up. I, Trade I know. up and get them if you're Calgary. I understand. Montreal's at five, and that's what it's, it's been burning in Montreal that maybe they're looking at Jerome's kid. Mm. Like, that's at five. Yeah. So. Who knows, man? Yeah, that's, he plays uh, what in Kelowna, I believe. And... Yeah, he plays in Kelowna, but he's a nice kid. Works hard. Obviously, Dad's a Hall of Famer. Like, you know, he got it in the blood. Like, he he can play. He can play. Yeah. So, who yeah, knows? Yeah. Well, there you go. I mean, that that get him to the worlds. Get Celebrini and Aginla <laughs> to the worlds. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> get them all over there. That's who I yeah. want to see play. Um, yeah, I mean, based it's mock drafts, it's rankings, but it, yeah. it looks like it's a fair amount of forwards that are expected to go. And then, um, you know, there, there are obviously going to be, you know, a combination of defensemen. I, I don't know if there's any goalies that are highly touted noodles. I, yeah, I haven't I, heard I, of any. They don't I've generally this, go in the first round much anymore anyway. It, is it next year this kid, Gavin McKenna? Like yes. That, that kid's He just be... lit up the U18s, oh. to, like put up like record numbers. Yeah, like that he's projected to be, you know, first Stud. overall. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll see. I mean, someone again, this is game changing. Like no yeah. one's jumped into the top three. So the three worst ducks. teams, the ducks, ducks are, are at three. three. Ducks so. are at three. So it's... Joe from the bridge over the top rope. There All you right. go. Well, yeah. listen, man, I mean, I mean, if, if I'm making a call here, I'd probably I think Chicago, Celebrini and Bedard would be incredibly cool. That's but yeah, oh, like Sharks I said, San Jose's win. fan base, they went through a lot this year. They so won it. They, they got the got lottery. It. So the they Sharks win. Sharks so get Celebrini it. to the Sharks. Then there Celebrini you go. to to the Bay Area. Interesting. Wow. I've always liked San Jose. You're I've always <laughs> been a fan. I've always been a fan. Go Sharks. Go Sharks. Go Sharks. Always go. a fan.
Yeah. All right. Thanks to everyone behind the scenes for helping out. We appreciate it. Everyone for tuning in today, TV, radio, podcast, web. We appreciate that. We're out of here. Enjoy your evenings. Enjoy the games tonight. We're back tomorrow at? Go in the hat box and find your positivity hat for tomorrow, boys. You better bring the heat at 4 p.m. We'll chat then.